tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello folks, I prepared a simple scene today. One cube and another cube I call the upper one up cube and the lower one ground because we'll have particles being emitted from this cube and they fall down here. Now you would typically do this using the particle, the end particle tool here which you find under FX and end particles. You would emit, uh, create an emitter or emit from the object and uh, then define this as a collider which you find under and cloth oddly enough create passive collider and that would create a collision with this ground plane here but we'll deal with the bifrost graph editor which is uh, a new module in Maya since summer 2019 we click here new graph and the new graph gives us an input and output and since we will deal with geometry we don't need the input as a geometry but what we'll do now is we'll just drag with the middle mouse button the up cube and the ground cube into this field here in the scene nothing has changed because we're just starting with our well node arrangement here this cube should emit particles and uh, that's why we use the tab key here and type in particles up here you see the previous searches I did and uh, get particles we need a source graph now which is down here source particles so this is basically creating an emitter from this mesh here so we can connect the output to the geometry input of the source particles now when we uh, connect this to the output uh, nothing will happen I think we'll get an error message because the particles don't do anything they actually we can do this let's try it out wait a second because the bifrost graph always takes a second to think and when we run the simulation nothing happened so this is not the connection we really which is really helpful because we always need when we deal with particles or steam or smoke or fire we always need a simulation engine here so tab key again and now we'll create simulate And here we have simulate arrow MPM. I did a tutorial about the MPM simulation as well. And here are the particles. Simulate particles. So now we have a particle source which goes out to sources. And we have particles which go out to the particle source here. Actually, no. This gives an, us an error, error message. If we created a brand new output node, we would know uh, it goes in here. And then it's all fine. We can just forget this input here, which we created with a brief test. Now we have the emission. And uh, for that purpose, I deactivate the Arnold real-time renderer. And here we have the particles spreading out and falling down under gravity. This is pretty simple, of course. We can hide the cube now the original cube now we want the collision to happen before we actually go to the core of this tutorial creating a pulsating emission here now collision tap collider now the collider needs a mesh to be fed in into the geometry and the collider output goes where well look look here the simulation um, engine of the particles has an input for colliders keep in mind what we just did was we created a single node collider connected it to the mesh and to the simulation and the particles now collide and don't fall down anymore next step is 
actually we put this to the side because we don't want to see it all the time now we'll create a pulsating motion here and uh, this is called pulse and you have attract repulse influence that's certainly not what you need but generate pulse pulse has an input and an output and uh, the output can go into the particles now uh, and into the emission part of the particles not in the simulation part and how do we do this when we connect this to whatever it doesn't help when we connect it to the set particles properties we get an error message all turns red here so this is certainly not what we want to do but when you have these plus signs you can open sections and here you see enable the particle simulation but uh, what we need here is particle properties and when we open them we have all the options about speed direction spread bounciness etc and here we can feed in our output into the speed for example which is a typical thing for pulsating well particle behavior let's see what it does it does that pulse really nice here we have the properties of the particles these are not the properties of the of the pulse really for example the rate 100 you can reduce this to 10 again wait a second bifrost graph is a little bit slow and this is a pretty fast machine here now we have much less particles being spread out so these are all things w which deal with the particle emission basically here is the pulse generation and uh, we have an interval of 0 0.5 seconds i guess so let's reduce this to 0 0.5 one and increase the on value from 10 to 20 you see a pulsating um, emission now with all kinds of different speeds but um, what you also see is that the pulse is so quick that you barely visualize it let's make the pulse very slow now like two And now we can change actually let's go back to 0 0.5 is quite nice now let's change the off value of the pulse to say three this uh, particle shape spreads wider because we have a, ch a different off amount of the pulsating motion I guess when we set this to a value like 10, this is even more obvious. Now, finally, I want to tell you something about mathematics when we we can use the output of the pulse generation for several inputs here for example for the spread now you see that the spread is far too wide so you would rather have this connection here to be weaker you would typically use a divide node in order to do this i want to show it demonstrate the divide node here with the size of the particles i want to generate particles with a pulsating si uh, size uh, bigger and smaller and you see they are far too big to visualize anything properly here and uh, that's why we need something like a mathematical node and in this case the division is quite good so divide and here is the divide node the divide 
basically all strict mathematical nodes in the Bifrost graph and in programming actually need a value to be put in here. So the division is basically not working unless you feed in a value. So value is the next node we're going to need. And the value has an output and it feeds into the divide node. And the divide node looks very happy now. It's not orange anymore. And the output of the divide node goes where now? Well, have a guess. The output of the divide goes into the size. So we d can disconnect the size when we use the divide input for the size. Now <laughs> the pulse is disconnected from everything here. That's why we use this output again and create another input here. So the general pulse is dividing one value by the other now. And let's see what's coming out of it when we enter a value here other than zero, for example, a value of three. Now we see bigger particles and smaller particles. In a pulsating matter, so behavior. So it's not a random distribution, it has to do with the pulsating motion. Well, let's just recap this graph because it already looks a little bit complicated. When you click in the in the empty space here and press the key L for layout, you get a clean layout. That's quite neat, really. Uh, we started with an up cube, the cube up there which emits particles so we need a source particles node and we connect the mesh to the input of the source particles the source particles qu quasi uh, the emitter use um, a simulation engine which is called simulate particles and uh, we feed the particle source into the sources input of the simulation and the simulate particles go out into a particles section here in the output if we want to render it properly, we need other nodes here which deal with rendering and we're not concerned with them today. Now the source particles have a generate pulse node here. The generate pulse node with a frequency of 0.5 seconds goes directly into the speed of the source particles. And uh, we wanted to do the same pulsating motion here with a size but that made two big particles really so we had to scale the pulse amount down using a value here which we use in combination with the divide node in order to collide with uh, the ground we have the ground node here we create a collider feed the mesh into the geometry and then the output into the simulation of the particles which has an input for colliders. And with this I leave you alone and try your own things with Bifrost Graph or with N-Particles. Bye-bye.